from Horizon Properties team. Um, we are back again this evening to, to try to disseminate and educate uh, you on a, a number of um, uh, facets of, of the property market, property transactions, and uh, how you can make uh, informed decisions before you make any investment uh, in, in property. Uh, last time, uh, I took you through um, some of the uh, risks involved in the property development or investment. Um, as a, a, a small beginner in, invest, in property investment, I talked about the investor risk, the knowledge you need to have as an investor, and property management risk, the knowledge you need to have if the property you are you have developed needs property management, like tenants. I took you about. Uh, I talked about the uh, debt risk, the risk associated with uh, borrowing and investing in property, and also I talked. I talked about the. I informed you about the tenant risk, the quality of tenants you may, may need to have for you to have um, a return. Expected return from your property investment. Um, I went into some kind of details about refurbishing a property. So um, I promise that uh, um, uh, this evening I will commence um, the topic relating to conversion of customer land to leasehold. Um, before I comments on, uh, on the explanation and the understanding. Uh, I'd like to emphasize that uh, uh, this conversion uh, of customer land to leasehold uh, is premised on on, um, on two pieces of legislation which govern land administration. CAP 184, the Lands Act, and CAP 185, the Lands and Deeds Act. CAP 188, uh, the Land Survey Act. So these are the pieces of legislation which uh, govern uh, land in the Republic of Zambia. Um, the conversion of land from customer land to leasehold, we will mainly base on um, in the beginning. In the beginning, we base on uh, we we'll we'll base it the premise on the Cap One Eighty Four, the Lands Act. Um, before we go into the procedure, I would like to um, read for you um, the uh, sections of the of the uh, Cap One Eighty Four, which um, gives the strength, which gives the background upon which the regulations uh, are based. Uh, first and foremost, um, Cap One Eighty Four, Part Two, Section Three, Subsection One. It reads, notwithstanding any anything. To the contract contained in any other law, instrument, or document, but subject to this act, all land in Zambia shall, uh, shall be vested absolutely into in the president of the Republic of Zambia and shall be held by him in perpetuity on behalf of the people of Zambia. So that is very, very important to understand uh, who holds land, who has who holds the land. So the land in Zambia is, 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 is being held by the Republican president as a custodian on behalf of the people of Zambia. Um, having said that, um, uh, section four, part one, subsection one, reads the president shall not alienate any land under subsection three, two and, two and three of section three without receiving any consideration and um, any money for such alienation and one range for such land, except where the alienation is for public purposes. Here, um, it, uh, you cannot uh, get land for free unless it's for public use. So the president uh, being represented by the Commission of Lands, uh, they will request for you to pay for the land that will be given, offered. So and also and thereafter, you will be able to pay grand rent because you are renting. 
So uh, furthermore, when you go to section eight, subsection one, uh, this now goes to where we are heading. Notwithstanding section seven, after the commencement of this act, any person who holds land under customary tenure may convert into leasehold tenure not exceeding 99 year lease, yes, on application in the manner prescribed by, by way um, of grant of lease, leasehold by the president or any other title that the president may grant. So this is where, this is where the authority to convert customer land to leasehold is premised. A premise on subsection eight, subsection, uh, subsection one of CAP 184. So um, that's how um, uh, the beginning of the procedure of uh, that's the principal act uh, uh, authorizes conversion of customer land into leasehold. Uh, one, one other section I would like to read for you is section nine, subsection one. Any person shall, shall not without authority to occupy or continue to occupy a vacant land. Section two, um, subsection two of section nine. Any person who occupies land in the contravention of subsection, subsection one, the one I've just read, is liable to be convicted. So you cannot occupy land without authorization. So as I as mentioned that um, a land uh, customer land can be converted. Um, the guidelines and the rules are set out uh, in the Saturday, Saturday instrument number 89 of 1996. Uh, this, uh, this is referred to as the regulations as the land's customer tenure conversion. You know, the the sub, Saturday instrument 89 of 1996 is the one which gives the guideline how land can be, uh, will be converted, shall be converted from customer tenure to leasehold. Uh, first and foremost, um, any person using, occupying land in a customer tenure area with the intention of, of settling there for a period of not less than five years may apply to the chief of the area where the land is situated on form one as set out in the shed. Uh, this is the procedure you have to make an application. So it's only the chief who uh, should consent to the conversion of land you are occupying. And you must be a resident of that area where the land is located. The, the chief uh, shall consider the application and shall give or refuse consent. The chief may refuse, may refuse consent uh, to convert the land for certain reasons. For example, if you're occupying land which is now a barrier place, the chief may not grant uh, authority to convert that land to leasehold. Um, it's good further to say um, that uh, uh, where the chief refuses consent, he shall communicate such refusal to the applicant and the Commission of Lands, stating the reasons for such refusal uh, on Form 2, uh, as set on the sheet. So um, when the chief refuses to grant consent, they will, he, he or she will, will be able, to, able to, to give a reason. So this is uh, the beginning. Uh, you need to... You need to have, first of all, a handwritten letter for consent from the chief, uh, together with the, um, that form, Form 1. So this is a, a letter handwritten by the chief to say that they have, you have been given, you have given uh, consent, and then you commence the, the application. So we will uh, we'll be going step by step to let you know how we will be able to, you are able to, uh, to uh, apply for land. So uh, app for application four, from one, regulation two, uh, it's a form 
which talks about, uh, which indicates your name, physical and postal address, location of the land, size of the land, and plot number, plan number. So we will go and um, see how, uh, in, in practicality, how uh, this plan number comes in. Plan number comes in. Uh, and also you have to declare, declare declaration of your rights, whether actually you are, you are supposed to be on that land or not. Um, on that form, uh, we look at part A, uh, number five, part A, it, it says, I or my family have had a right to the use and occupation of the land shown on the plan for a continuous period of, of you state the number of years, period I've lived there. Remember, I mentioned about the period, if you intend to stay at that land, the customer land for more than five years, then you are entitled to make an application. Uh, so these are some, this is the procedure, first of all, uh, for this evening, we'll stop at this point uh, where you have made an application uh, upon consent by, by the chief. Uh, next uh, uh, Tuesday, we'll continue and guide you in practical terms how you proceed from that position of an application. Uh, um, wish you a good evening and we'll continue, uh, we'll continue to deliver some more information on the same as procedure, step by step, in practical terms, how you can convert the land, customer land, into this property.